after the meeting's done. But again, today is Tuesday, October 11th, 2011. I want to thank everyone for joining us this week. I hope everyone had a chance to answer the questions on the polls. And uh, we're definitely going to take that feedback and, and utilize it in the future here. Again, you can kind of email our social email at mfglobal.com. We love to hear tips, you know, past experiences, what you'd like to hear from us in the future as far as webinars are concerned. Um, your feedback is, is the best, so we'd love to hear it. I'm Tim Staunton. and I'll be hosting today's program. Today we'll be joined by MF Global Senior Market Strategist Tim Habercorn. Tim's going to continue this section of his series with a live demonstration uh, by putting a trading plan into action. He will sum up his webinars on developing and ex executing a trading plan and go a little bit further. Remember, if you missed his two first webinars, again, you can go to that blog, letstalkfutures.com, webinar archives page, and you can pick those two up. If you'd like to ask questions during the presentation, please utilize the chat box in the right-hand corner. Today's webinar is part of our ongoing effort to educate Investors and traders about futures, and if you'd like to be notified about similar events, please register at the link you see on the screen, www.mfglobal.com, Individual Trading, Trading Advice, Events. You can stay in touch with MF Global through Facebook, YouTube, and Twitter. Please feel free to check out our archived webinars on our blog at letstalkfutures.com. Please feel free to um, subscribe to our channel on YouTube where you can get daily futures markets insights. Tim is a senior market strategist. If you're interested in trading futures with Tim, we do have a special offer of half-off um, commissions for the first 30 days. Please keep in mind that today's webinar takes place at a specific time, and any opinions or recommendations given by Tim can be changed without notice at any time. Futures trading involves substantial risk of loss, and therefore is not suitable for all investors. And of course, past performance is not necessarily indicative of future results. Today's webinar will last approximately 15 minutes. Tim will spend some of his time on commentary, and once he has completed it, he will take your questions. Again, you can use the IM box in the corner for any questions that you might have. Might not answer them immediately, but he'll definitely get to them at the end of the presentation. If he doesn't get to any questions, his contact is up here now, and will also be up at the end of the webinar. On that note, I'll go ahead and uh, pass it over to Tim. Appreciate you being here, Tim. Thanks, Tim. I appreciate it. Uh, welcome, everybody. Today's uh, Markets on the Move, uh, actually, to AKA uh, educational uh, series for uh, trading futures. Um, this is the first series uh, I, I intend to uh, have, a, have about five to six more, if not more, series on different topics of tra in trading. Um, Next week, next series to start next week, we'll go into, uh, we'll uh, jump into the technical side of trading. Um, I'm a very, I'm very technically orientated when I trade. Um, I've only traded on, on the screens and uh, that's the way I know how to do it, the way it goes now. And uh, I intend to show you guys some of the tricks of the trades that I use to uh, determine the trades. But uh, real quick, before we jump into the trading plan, um, part of it and going into the last part of it, I want to uh, discuss a few of the uh, current situations. Um, you know, I have I have a lot of people that I you know talk to on a daily basis, and I've had actually a lot of people who have uh, who have opened who have come and joined the uh, desk um, because of the past couple of webinars, and they uh, they wanted to they wanted to work more hand in hand with me. And uh, again, I encourage anybody. Uh, you're more than welcome. Uh, you know, to come and join the desk uh, again. You know, the key thing really is before you ever get to the market is making sure you feel comfortable and you, you have a the, the most rock solid plan you could possibly have to handle any circumstance, or at least the circumstances that you're getting into with the specific market or trade that you're looking at. But most importantly, I'm noticing a lot of the same thing with all sorts of traders. I I'm talking about traders that. Uh, been trading for 20 plus years and traders who are brand new at this. Um, one of the things that we're seeing today overall in all the markets, if you noticed, you know, volatility has been a very key part of trading the past couple of months, even beyond that. And it's the markets have had these incredible ranges, uh, which I think are great. Um, but again, like, like the gold pulling back, 
uh, which I touched on that in webinars before it had, it had pulled back. I had went through and given my opinion on how I thought it would sort of come back with the euro. And uh, before they had happened to pull back, and I called it pretty good. But more importantly, there's something that I'm noticing lately in the past two weeks that the markets overall, you know, how we used to go in before, if you were a shorter term trader, you, you were able to, there was a lot of moves, like gold was moving and the silver was moving gigantically each day. Uh, you're seeing these incredible ranges. Well, right now, I'm noticing in all, in all the, not, not all of them, but I would say most of the common markets that people trade, we're not seeing, right now, those ranges are gone. So you don't want to be trading the markets like you're trading the ranges, those big ranges. You have to be able to, and this should be part of your plan, you want to be able to do adapt to the market. You want to see the marketplace and realize what type of market are you in? How am I going to trade this market? I'm not going to try and buy uh, long-term positions for uh, a market that is hands down going back and forth uh, you know, every 10 minutes. It's just not going to work. Uh, but today, the type of markets that I've been seeing, and more, mostly in like the gold the, or the metals, the indices, um, and a couple of the other ones, not all of them, that we're, we're seeing a lot of like choppy congestion. Um, things are really getting tense, in the, and you can see it on the chart. And typically when we see this type of pattern come in, and if, look at the gold today, uh, or look at the S&Ps or the Dow. It was back and forth. If you look at the chart throughout the day, even to the end of the last minute, it gives you just out of nowhere, it'll all of a sudden like start going up real strong. But you know, really, it's only it's still within. It's, you have to look at the market and say, wait, we're still within the choppy range that we've been in all day. So what am I going to get out of this? Nothing. You don't want to chase a choppy market. That's a waste of time. You, you just you just don't want to get involved in it. What you should be doing in times like this, when we're seeing like, for example, the S&P, the Dow, or the gold. When I'm, when I'm, when I'm wa watching these markets go sideways, there's actually something really important to watch. You're watching where these things are struggling at, on the upside, on the downside. Um, you know, what areas are coming into play? What's that overall, overall pattern look like on the weekly, the daily? Um, you'll pick up on trends. And if you look at, if you follow charts, enough and you're, and, you're, and you're watching them for, you know, every, you know, a couple days a week, if not every day of the week, uh, eventually after a certain amount of time, you'll eventually notice that, hey, hey, you know, this market, this market, I, I've seen this pattern, you know, even though there's, there's no going to, you can't count on any similar pattern or any same pattern to come into play. I mean, that's just not going to happen. Don't count on that. But you'll see things that look familiar. And I'm not talking about your basic head and shoulders or your basic double top or anything like that. I'm talking about the overall, just how the chart looks, the feel of it. Um, the, the, you'll, you'll see that, which I'm noticing in the gold, there's a 1661 area that's, that seems to be overall very interesting to me. And, and the market, in, in some terms, you know, it, it looks like it wants to go up. You know, overall, yes, I am still a beer uh, on the market. I need to see certain things happen before I'm going to approach that upside. I'm in no hurry to start buying this market, um, you know, could it come out of nowhere and, and, and could it go up? Possibly. I mean, if, if that happens, uh, I'm not going to be the first guy onto it by no means. I'm not trying to pick tops and I'm not trying to pick bottoms. That's a dangerous way to trade. But one thing I am noticing that we are getting real combustive and it looks like the market just wants to make that next move. Um, I would say, depending on how this week ends in the markets, uh, watching the gold and watching the S&Ps, uh, if, if they're both going to break again, we could have a very good idea here uh, very soon on uh, what, what the next move in those markets are going to be. If, the, if that's the case and come you know, Thursday, Friday, it could even be tomorrow morning we could see something. Uh, I'm going to start positioning or informing my clients going over these markets with them. I'm already going over what's possible with them, but we're going to go over what, how a setup and how we want to play this. Uh, starting out, again, starting out simple and having a uh, fully built position all the way through. Uh, same thing when, when the gold was going up, when it started, when it broke in the 980s. You know, I, I no way did I expect gold to go where it went that quick, that fast. Okay, hands down. If anybody tells you that, they're lying. But at least when we broke up, uh, we started going up. The one thing was um, back before it broke a thousand, I was building plays, starting out simply just buying options, or and then, you know adding futures at certain points. Once we certain things were uh, were locked in, and we would always protect ourselves, but but keep a fair distance away 
to play it to at least take advantage of it. That was very, very, very awesome. Uh, again, you don't want to count on those moves because those aren't every day. Real quick, though, let me go into the trading plan a bit. Uh, a lot of you guys uh, have been following the trading plan, and this is sort of the end of the series. And I want to let you know that if you guys, you know, every trading plan is going to be different. You can't copy a trading plan off the Internet and then use it because everybody's different on how and what and what they're what they're like I mean emotionally uh, what their what their amount of risk capital is what their what, what type of market are they trying to do what type of strategy does it fit you the best and if that's something that you need help with I've had a lot of people uh, actually again some join the desk and a lot of people have called in and you know we were able to chat for a while and uh, I helped them fine-tune some of the points to look at and uh, hopefully everybody uh, helps everybody out but real quick I'm gonna just brush through some things we've gone over and then there's a couple new slides and then a couple and then Excel spreadsheets uh, real quick I'll go the first slide here um, let's see here in here is you know again you want to look at the focus points um, of overall of what you're trying to do here you're trying to develop a, a plan here that's going to give you it's going to give you a structure of why you should get into the market. You know, why, why, why am I getting in this trade? I'm not following my friend Larry who told me that, hey, he's, he buying, he's buying the stock market, so I'm going to go in and buy it in the morning. I'm not following the guy on, on, uh, on CNBC radio, uh, some you know, guy who shows up once in a while and says, hey, I really like the long side of this market. I like going long gold. Well, you know what? That's, that's, that's a suicide way to trade. You don't, what, what does that mean? Those guys... You know the, the guest guys. Most of them don't even understand. You know what, what's going on. They don't. They're not outlining their risk. They're not outlining where they're getting in. And those are the most important parts. And that's what I want to teach uh, you, the, tra the traders that are listening and the traders that are going to listen. Is that you know it's important to define those areas and know um, the whole the whole roundabouts of the trade you're trying to do. Um, it includes getting out of the market again. The risk. What situations, if you see, does that mean you're going to lock in your profit? Also, what if you see a certain chart set up? Again, I'll get into technicals next week, but I'm going to show you a couple of things technically where you might see in the chart and say, "Oh, you know what? I'm up X amount of dollars on this trade. Um, I'm going to take my profit." Again, your gut's always going to tell you, "Oh, maybe I can get a little bit more. I should stay with it." But if you go to bed that night and you made money, you'll never be mad. Um, you know, when you keep things on, and I, I hear this all the time, people, they tell me they're, they're waking up at 2, 3 in the morning and they're running, sneaking to the bathroom, checking on their, their smartphone to see where the market's at. And, and again, if you're, worried, or if you're worried that much about what's going on in the market, then, they, then you need to fine-tune your plan. And you need to understand, uh, you know, you, the points of, uh, of and the technicals a little bit better. So picking your trades by order of your plan. Um, also, stick to your plan, no excuses. Um, you don't want to diverge or, or go into some uh, quick tip that you heard. It's just a, it's just a bad way to trade. Um, and again, I'm gonna I'm gonna fly through these here because they're archived. But let's get in here. It's uh, getting into the market. Follow your plan again. You're gonna want to look and in your plan, you're gonna want to uh, have. You're gonna want to include that. You know, each morning. You're going to want to look what economic numbers are coming out today. Is there somebody speaking? Is there uh, in, over in Europe, you know, with uh, all the issues they're having there between the banks and with Greece, uh, are there any important meetings or votes coming up? Uh, is there anything I need to look at? Previous trading points. Uh, again, that'll be more with the technical side when I get into it later, but you're going to want to look at, for example, the gold chart, 1661. Uh, Am I, is that a point? How are we looking? Are we closing below it? Are we closing above it? How does that look? That's going to determine your trade and you know your plan to get into your next trade. Focus on the fundamentals and technicals. You know, again, you really want to understand you know what could come at you at any point, and if A, B, or C happens, what your plan of attack is. Uh, so again, economic numbers, any type of speak, speaking event. Uh, previous uh, previous trading day or even the week or month areas that we're coming to or we bounced off of for that day. Uh, those are things that you'd want to put in your trading plan that you want to on a daily basis or if it's a weekly, monthly, even it's a yearly when you get in the markets. You want to know that, that around that time, you want to understand, you know, the guts of 
uh, of the trade and getting in. Uh, next slide. No, geared toward more of a short-term trader, building a short-term plan. Again, a lot of the things that I've touched on previously, um, you know, determining your entry and you want to determine your entry around your risk. You want to know that, uh, A, I'm, I like getting in the gold here because, you know, hypothetically it's at 1661. This is the area we've been sort of struggling at. So I know uh, our breakout point's a little bit higher. So I'm going to try and sell it right around here. This is where my this is where my risk is at. I know that if we get right up above here and we close, bam, that market could be heading north next week, maybe even sooner, if that's the case. So you know what you know you're getting in at your spot, and you know where your risk is at. There should be there's there's no excuses. There, there's no excuses when it comes to risk. Uh, I've heard every one of them in the in the book, and believe me, it's it all comes down to you didn't have a plan on either getting in at the right spot or you didn't you just jumped in on something because you have a feeling a gut feeling you don't want to trade by your gut you want to trade by what you see and that's what I encourage you to stick by uh, the foundation of a trade you know it's funny last week this was uh, this slide right here trading crude oil uh, late Tuesday and uh, excuse me late trading crude oil late Tuesday and early Wednesday around the number uh, last week I specifically said you know this is a trading plan criteria, you know, a specific type of trade that you're going to focus on, you know, because you don't want to be focused on 20 different things and trying to watch everything. You'll go crazy, believe me, uh, or you'll start drinking a lot, and that's not good either. You, you'll, uh, this is why you have a plan. The key is, I said, last week and every week in general, I, I watched crude oil come Tuesday towards the close, even when the stock market closes, I, I watch it. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to see, if, is the market overall, is it down a little bit? Or regardless, does it have a lot of support somewhere near and around where we're at? Because typically going into the crude oil number, it will, it will come up early that morning, overnight and early that morning, it'll trade higher in preparation of that number. That's going to be a that's going to be in my plan where, you know, every, every Wednesday at 930, that energy number comes out, unless there's a holiday. I want to focus on the crude oil since I'm trading the crude oil. Since that's one of for my one year for my overall one year goal, these are the markets I'm going to trade. Well, crude oil is one of them. Okay, now crude oil. I know on this every Tuesday, Wednesday, if I see the setup that I like, you know, given that there's A, B, and C uh, are are in line, then I, I'm that's what you want to. That's what you're going to be trading. You're going to know that if you see the best setup which is on the technical side. I'll get into that next week. But again, if you see the right setup, you know where your risk is at, then take a shot. That's trading. You know, you want to, you want to see the right chart pattern. Um, again, long-term trades versus short-term trade. Your plan, again, you're generally a plan's a plan. You just want to make the longer-term trade is going to be someone who says, hey, I'm going to buy, I'm going to look at the RBOB market because I like buying the RBOB. And this is actually something that I do do with clients. Every end of December, early January, I strictly go in with certain clients and I buy our Bob calls and I'm buying them for, for March, April, and May. Okay, they're, they're, you're paying a little bit more premium for them and you, you don't want to go out of the money too far. I'm not trying to play that far trade. I'm trying to play a quicker trade because gasoline, our Bob, that's typically when we're going to see that market generally go higher. In, in preparation for the future, meaning you're trading the futures for summer driving season, etc. So that's a long-term trader in his plan. He's going to say, hey, a seasonal trade around the end of the last quarter or beginning of the first quarter, I'm looking at long-term uh, long RBOB, possibly crude, depending on, you know, crude has a lot of things involved with it. RBOB is the RBOB, it's the gasoline. That's why I use that example uh, specifically. But there could be other other type of long-term plays. You could be as a hedger in a hedging type strategy where you're going to look for uh, particular market situations, like the stocks are are, are screaming. They're all they've been screaming up for months and months, and they're all-time higher. And and I'm going to look to hedge my stock portfolio, things like that. You develop a plan around that. Again, everything falls back onto risk. Uh, Different risk management, you know, formulating your risk, rebalance your portfolio, see it through. Long term means long term. Again, you're formulating your risk no matter what, short term, long term. If you're buying an option, you put the price you pay is your max is your is your risk. 
no one should let an option just go down to zero if that's, if that's how you're trading or if, or if you're working with somebody and that's the type of uh, the advice that you're getting, then I would suggest that you, uh, you take a second look at things because regardless, even if you're buying an option and that's your risk, what you pay for it, okay, you still want to have a plan of, okay, well, if, if we start seeing this option uh, generally lose 60% at the most of its value, you know, I need to start looking for an out on this thing. I don't need to sit and wait on this thing to, to take away all, all my money. I need to find an out. You want to include that in your plan, something of that nature. Um, trade the trend. Do not try and cha change or challenge the trend. It goes back into the beginning of what I was talking about. Right now, it seems like the markets have gotten very choppy. Very, uh, you know, they're they're consolidating. Not all of them, but I, I see I see a lot of the bigger markets getting really consolidating, uh, waiting for for the next for something big to come here. Usually, when you see a consolidating market, that generally I generally tend to think that you tend to see the market okay. Then it starts going again the other way, or vice versa. It'll start really going the way it was going before it went into this chop. So that's something to look at. Um, Again, this was a this was a last week of slide. Humans need to touch fire before they learn. Same principles go for trading. So, if you're if a trade is going against you and you really do not have a clue on what your risk is and you shouldn't be in that trade, then you know, come on, how many of those situations can you get into before you realize, you know, I'm not making money. This is a losing strategy. I need to rework it. That's why it's important when you, to have a trading plan and in that trading plan to have a risk, have your risk built in. 5% per day of your overall portfolio value. Of course, you need to be trading the appropriate pro products uh, accustomed to what you're, you're, you're working with. You don't want to be someone who comes in and tries to open a $3,000 account and trade big oil and, and, big, and big gold and big S&Ps because it's just it's not going to work. It, it's, it's too tight. So you need to be realistic on it. Uh, trading without a plan, it came out of nowhere. These are excuses you hear for people that don't understand risk. It came out of nowhere. I don't know why. It, uh, it's going to come back. You know, I don't have. I don't have time to look at it. You know, you don't have time to look at it, or it'll come back. Or let's give it more time. That, that, that's all. It's all a losing. That's a no strategy plan right there. And that's bound eventually. Even if you have a good trade here or there, in the long run, believe me, you will never win. That's not the way you want to trade. You need to have that risk again. Five percent. Uh, and for trading with futures max per per day, if you go over five percent, again, then you want to, you know, your day should be over. You shouldn't be revenge trading going into things. These are things that you need to have in your plan. If your plan is again, you write it up on a Microsoft Word uh, to give you the overall something to read every single day before you get into a trade or the days you trade. That's something that you should have in front of you, and you should read it to refresh you to. Just something you can have that thing imprinted in your brain before it becomes secondhand. That's what you'll look like if you have no risk plan. Sounds probably sounds familiar for some people, or it looks familiar to some people. When I was starting out, before I understood, before the person who taught me how to trade emphasis on risk, I found myself in these situations, and it was miserable. And I'll tell you what: the second you get your hand, your, your control on risk, and you have your plan developed, you won't be dealing like. Now, I'm going to sort of start here with the new part. Uh, you know, the next three slides, I'm not, you know, I'm not going to read them uh, hand for hand. These are going to be archived. But the, the next three slides, I literally took out three paragraphs, okay? Three total paragraphs from an overall one word sheet, okay, uh, done in Microsoft Word. This is something that I quickly jotted down. Well, not quickly, but I sort of, you know, I keep in front of me, and this is something that I read, uh, I'll read on a daily basis uh, each day. I'll spend a minute, I'll scan through it, and, you know, really at this point, it's imprinted in my brain because I, uh, no matter what, I always look at it. I just, I could tell you without even reading it. I could recite the whole thing for you. But the next three slides, I encourage you to, if you're printing these out uh, or, or uh, save them to your computer and then going through it, to definitely... Use these three slides as far as creating yourself a just a general something to foul so you can sort of see, okay, here's my plan in writing. This is a plan that, that's in writing that, uh, you know, again, not 
not every little point's going to be be for maybe for you. Um, again, I'm going to get into the next series on technical. Then we're going to do a series on fundamental and so on. So you'll be able to develop things on your own. But in the meantime, please contact me and call me by phone so I can at least get an idea for what you're so, sort of what you're working with and uh, what you're. Uh, what you're sort of trying to accomplish, and I'll just help you define these points a little bit quicker, and I'll help you uh, build it. You know, that's no problem. Um, again, these just sort of goes over into uh, who needs a plan. You know, again, it doesn't matter if you've been trading for 10, 15, 20 years, and it's just you haven't been successful. Overall, you're not profitable, or you're not. You haven't been. Uh, you look at the bottom line, but you know, and if you haven't. You haven't uh, made what you thought you were going to make in the futures, or if you see that you've been ahead and then you've had big losses, you need to you need to make a plan. You need to adjust your plan. You need to make it appropriate for you, not someone else's, for you. So, uh, you know, anybody that sees or anybody that you know relates to uh, trading in any manner should use one. Um, this is sort of a the next couple slides are going to be really just parts of what you need to include in your plan. You know, overall smart trading, you know, is writing a plan. It's okay, and, and it's gonna be your risk planning, you know, generally your profit taking. You wanna have goals. You're gonna wanna have goals in there for equity goals. You'll see on the next slide. You are going to have a fundamental plan and a technical plan. That's the guts of what you want. That's your heart of the plan right there. You need you need to define those those specific uh, each, each of those topics. Now, they each can branch off into, you know, all sorts of different things, um, you know, as far as risk planning. You know, what's your emotional point? Again, this is risk capital. You know, you have to be able to, in a way, and I know it's, there's no way, it's not, it's, it's, it's not easy, you know, to, to emotionally separate yourself uh, from a losing trade, but you really have to have a plan so you can get rid of the emotion that will, that will come when the, when the trade's not going your way. So you don't make a mistake and act in a quick manner to make it even worse. Next slide here, organizational points. You know, these are, these are pre-trading phase one. So pre-trading, um, one, one thing that I'm gonna wanna make sure that I'm touching on before I get into the markets, and I do this with clients every single day. I usually send it out by email so they don't have to do this. I look at, Daily reports, I send it out. What's what's going on out there? What what, what are the reports? What's going on in the grains? What's going on in the metals, in the stock market, in the bonds? You know, what do we have come at us? If I, I, I'll include in there a chart, meaning if you're somebody who's you know in you know trading, you're gonna want to say, okay, my technical points, what are my spots if I'm trading the bonds today that are I'm gonna want to focus on? Are we coming by in any specific area that has been a you know, thorn in the side of the market? Has it been a resistance or a support? You know, focus for the day. You're going to want to generally get this part figured out before you get in. Um, you know, if you're working with someone, this is something that I that I would expect. I know my, uh, I, I give, deliver that to my clients uh, before they get into any trade. I, I like to give them a breakdown of every possible, you know, situation, you know, wrapped up. But again, a lot of the markets that we're getting into, we've been following for a while, and they're coming to the spots that, we, that we've been planning on. So uh, that's somewhere where you'll eventually get. Post-trading, you know, when I get out of the market and after I get out of the market, you know, mo mo most people are fine, you know, if I'm, when I'm there helping them. But if you're someone who's on your own, you know, you want to examine, you know, if, if you, you had a day where, you know, you, you hit your risk point and you finally say, hey, my, okay, my plan calls for this amount of risk. You know, I'm done. I, I you know, I got to re-examine it. You know, or if you're, if you, if if you have the day when you know you're coming out ahead and you're you're hitting profit targets, or you get out of the market on four year, three year, three or four of your trades, and you lock in profit, you know, how much more do you have to go for your to hit your goal for that that period of time? Uh, you want to do technical fundamental analysis. For example, I'll take I take charts every day. I email them out to my clients. But I draw. I have in the charts. I've drawn in their lines. I have arrows pointing to different areas, and I have full explanations of saying, "Hey, this is the area right here. The market's not close to there yet, but this is what I think is going to happen if it gets to this point. You know, take a look at it. Call me if you have any questions, or if you think different, let me know. You know, that's why 
you know, I still I like talking to my clients because no one's ever ever going to be right, 100% right. It's always good to have a second opinion on the charts and on the you know overall analysis of the markets. Uh, B or the uh, the third point is adjust. Being able to adjust uh, your plan if you notice you're hitting your risk a lot, that's key too. Uh, again, examining trends goes into the technical part of it. Uh, let's go here to the next slide. This goes to your goals, mapping the route to your destination. You know, let's say today you started trading. You know, this is something you're going to want to have in your plan. This will be in the Excel sheet, but really quick. You're going to want to break it down. This is how I would recommend somebody to break it down. Who's, you know, if you're new or if you've been doing this for a while and you've been unsuccessful, then you should really break down your goals and create something to measure yourself by. Because if you don't, you're going to, you're, 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 it's still, if you miss one part of the plan, you have, you're taking the chances of just not being successful in trading. And if that's the case, then why are you wasting your time doing it? You know, that's how I look at it. So, you know, every person I work with, first day or when, you know before we start I, we create goals you know we go we go the first month we try to hit our goal second month third month and then we go fourth through eighth month and then eighth through twelfth so we try to balance out at the end of the year hit our goal something I really highly encourage you know again you'll see within my Excel spreadsheet which is going to pop up next you know what the profit you know what the the first the first month 13 percent then I'm looking at 22 percent 22 percent 43%. That's trying, what my profit, that's what my goal is going to be. That's what we set out, we made in the beginning. That's what we want to try and hit our targets. Uh, let's go to the uh, Excel. One sec, I'm going to pull that up right here for you. Okay. <clears throat> this is just an outline of, you know, again, your trading plan, you know, just wrap it up. You don't need to make a 10 page. You're not looking to make a book on it or a pamphlet. You're looking to make a quick guide. So everything that we talked about before, you know, needs to be summed up, you know, so you have rules to follow when you trade. This is something to where, you know, you can, you want to, you know, I, I, I use it to somewhat with clients to help them follow a plan a little bit more, add an extra part onto it. I have two, two, two different tabs here, a $10,000 account and a $100,000. Now, if let's say you're a $10,000 account, okay, first month you're starting, the goal is going to be to make $2,500, okay? That's how I set up this, the starting amount, the goal, the markets I'm gonna, that we're going to trade. I'm not going to try and bounce around and, and try and get every opportunity because it's not going to happen. You want to keep yourself focused. I'm going to focus on, let's say, mini crude futures, unless the client has a specific strategy or if it's you individually and you want to focus on, then you're going to put, you know, the market, stick to the markets your focus is on. Uh, I'm going to do future, futures. I'm also going to use, you know, uh, option plays that last for one to two weeks, um, shorter term option plays um, to begin with. Ending balance, 12500 2500 in a month. Um, you know, it's a good start. Uh, again, anytime you're coming out ahead is good. Risk, 5% risk for futures, 20% per, per options. So, again, that option goes to the total amount you're paying is it going to be 20, 30, 40 percent of what that option value is before you say I need to get out? Next month, you see, et cetera, 12,500. We're looking to make $5,000. Bam. As you go down, you'll see ending of the year, $47,500. Now, if this was your first plan you're following, that's not bad. And a lot of the times, again, you know, everybody has greed in them and everybody wants to make the most amount of money. You know, the, there's, there's no doubt about that, you know, but again, you want something you can follow. And if I was, if I was looking at somebody's trading throughout the end of the year and they showed me that this was their plan and this is their goal, and if you're able to accomplish, that's a huge goal. You, you, you literally made on top of whatever else, you know, you have going on, you, you know, you may, you have another income in here and you had a nice return. Most investments with $10,000 are not going to show you a return of that nature. Now, yeah, the risk is going to be a lot higher, but you're going to have your risk your risk parameters set out for yourself. So, you know, you shouldn't be getting wiped out on one trade. You know, you shouldn't be getting taken a, a 60% hit on one trade. That's ridiculous. I mean, if, you're, if, if that's how you're trading, you need a plan. This is something, though, I would really encourage you to, to add into your plan uh, as a sort of a goal sheet to keep uh, look at. Here's the $100,000 one. And again, both of these plans, and again, I've 
I started with clients with 10,000, with 5,000, 10,000, 100,000 to a million to more and all between there. And I've created plans for them. But I wanted to keep it uh, simple here for you guys. Same thing, starting with $100,000. If you make 15,000 that first month, you're trading crude oil, gold, silver futures, the normal contracts with options. You know, vice versa, you go all the way down. It's something to see, it's something to work towards. Anytime you go over, you know, if you hit your goal early, Great, it's money in the bank for the next month, you know. But stick, try and stick to something, have a plan, because if you don't have a plan and you're going to the markets, you're most likely you're, you're going to need a lot of luck on your side to end up coming out of this ahead. Uh, I, too many people I end up, you know, that, that I work with have unfortunately gone and have worked to, or trading somewhere and they try to conquer it on their own. And they didn't, they didn't have any luck because you know, almost 99% of them, they didn't have a plan or they use another plan and they didn't know how to implement their own plan to fit them right. So please feel free, you know, I encourage you to contact me uh, if you need help with this. I'm not looking to get anybody to trade. I just want to help you uh, develop a sound strategy for yourself. As an investor, my, even myself, I'll tell you this right now, I wouldn't give anybody a dollar of my money unless I 100% had confidence or I wouldn't go off their plays unless I had confidence in what they did and, and, they, and they showed me something sound to really run with. And, and that's all I want to do. Again, when, when it comes to trading, that's in your corner. And when you're ready to do it, that's when you trade. But again, in the meantime, if there's anything I could do to help you, you know, feel free to call me or shoot me an email and we can go into it in more depth. Everybody have a great day.